come to talk about different aspects of education today. Um, sharing thoughts, sharing what's on our hearts, I think to kick off a process of dialogue. And the position that I would like to advance is that every child should have access to, a, to schooling in a non-violent schooling environment. My name is Ashley Basaki. I'm a Canon Collins uh, uh, scholarship student and I'm also a PhD candidate at UCT School of Education. Okay, I think it's a very important issue because it's been in pilot phase since about 2012 in the Western Cape Education uh, Department or province. And what's happened recently is that there's been a commitment of more funding to this program. So it's, it's a kind of in a stage, it's really interesting where people are considering around scaling up this initiative. There's the idea behind it that police in schools can uh, create school safety, but there's also a kind of a long history of research around school policing. And out of those contexts, what we see is not kind of reducing school safety, but actually stigmatizing students. I'm Anne Halger, I'm a PhD student at the University of Cape Town. I'm also a Canon Collins scholar. I'm here to talk about TVET education and the economy. And I want to ask you to imagine, imagine that the TVET college responds to economic growth plans at the local level, at the district municipal level. We know that real economic, social and political power is at the local level. How that power is expressed, I think is a story for another day and a story on its own. However, it is at the local level where the social contract between the state and its people is most realized. And therefore, at the local level is where the TVET College can play a fundamental role aligning work, and not just any kind of work, dignified work with a just and fair economy. Not the kind of economy where you work seasonally. Um, during Christmas, you work at Woolies, and then come February, the season's over, and then you've got to hustle with the next little bit of work while still making sure you have your 150 for the three days that it needs to get you to college. So I want you to imagine that. Imagine that the municipality through its economic and growth plans can provide an enabling environment for industries and sectors and in return the college can grow the skills and labour for those industries. That those graduates are probably from the area. They are interconnected to the well-being of that district and they understand in a very nuanced way the social and economic needs. And yet there is misalignment, there is disconnection between what exists in the policy space and to that and the reality. And so the and question is how we're able to strengthen the power of TVET education to grow a society and an economy that holds the promise of the future but also harnesses the opportunity of the present. Adult education, and again, Ivo would have mentioned this, was framed mostly as a second chance schooling opportunity. Go back there, get it the qualification or certificate, the, the general education or further education certificate that you were not able to achieve, not because you're part of that neat community. No? In documents you are, not in education, employment and training, but because the system failed you. And we need to say, how do we address this in the formal system? But now what do we do about these youth that have gone back to these community learning centers? Um, pretty much under similar conditions. The curriculum is much the same that they address, uh, that they need to get through. Um, so, so these are really, really important uh, questions. But the issue goes back to what is the purpose of the non-formal education in the community learning centers and college space? So what DVV has tried to do with our NGO and other partners, academic partners, is to try and, and, and assist in bringing the, the non-formal education into the space. Now, well, the situations and what people face every day is very different. Our curriculum is one that emerges. We don't go in there with a neatly packaged curriculum that uh, assumes we know the needs, because we don't. And, you know, I think for our educators in learning centers to understand and to learn how to facilitate these approaches is a huge leap that needs to happen. 
So our organization with our partners have been trying to support the department in this process.